But here in Guatemala, it's the collision of tectonic plates deep underground that plays a critical role in the team's mission. They're hoping to capture Fuego's next violent nighttime eruption. But much to the team's frustration, there's little sign that a major explosion is imminent. We've got in quite a few shots of some small eruptions. It's a case of just perseverance and keep on fishing and one of these days we're gonna catch one. Beneath Guatemala, where two plates collide, Oceanic rock meets continental rock. The oceanic rock is pushed downwards into the hot interior of the planet, where it melts. This newly created molten rock is less dense than the magma around it. And below Fuego, it slowly rises to the surface, eventually erupting. What we're here for is some really good, large, explosive eruptions. They could happen at any moment, or not at all. Is that the last position or is that where it's sitting right that's, now? That's pretty the team knows that one clue that this big eruption is about to take place lies within the crater itself. Slightly above the summit, looking at it from here. Today, they are going to attempt the first part of their mission, to place a camera right on the rim of the crater to look down into its scorching heart. Getting to see right into the crater would be amazing. They are going to be looking for how much loose rock has accumulated and any sign of movement. This could mean a big explosive eruption is due any day. Duncan is going to use a remote controlled camera he's built for the job. The only way to get it close enough is to lower it into position using a drone he specially adapted. It has to be powerful enough to cope with the thin air at Fuego Summit, nearly 4,000 meters above sea level. So can test the camera. It's the first time anyone has ever attempted this. What we're trying to do here is completely new and innovative. We're trying to place these cameras right inside the crater of Fuego so that we can get angles that have never been seen before. Duncan has spent six months designing and building the drone and crater cam. So this camera's still good. It's very nerve-wracking because you know that if there's a blast, the aircraft gets destroyed and you, you can't try the experiment again. He only has one set of kit. So if anything goes wrong, there's no second chance. But I'm, I'm just trying to talk myself out of this because, you know, because <laughs> I know the consequences. If it, if it goes off, we, we lose the drone. Should we go? Yeah, I think we just go. Okay, sounds good. Taking off. Duncan's crater cam is in the air. It's accompanied by two other drones to help him guide it into position. He wants to place the camera in exactly the right spot on the edge of the crater, so it's pointing down into it. And then get the drone away before it's destroyed by an eruption. 600 meters to go. Duncan's drone only has 20 minutes of battery life. It's a race against time. 300 meters to go. So we're entering the blast zone now. If it goes off, yeah, we're, we're going to be knocked out of the sky. Yeah. They are almost in position above the crater rim. 
the landing site is only a few meters wide. And if the crater cam smashes into a rock, it will be destroyed. Okay, they're coming down now. Is it down no, there? no, no, pull up. You need to be closer to the crater. About three meters closer to the crater. Yeah. We're in the danger zone for far too long, but we need to get this camera down. Yeah. Okay, how, how far am I? Oh, Christ, I just hit the volcano. You're right within the crater now, you're right above the event. Duncan's now drifted right above the crater itself. And the volcano could erupt at any moment. Eruption, eruption, eruption. Rise up, rise up. RTL, RTL, RTL. Suddenly, lumps of red hot magma hurtle towards the drone. It's undamaged, but the battery is now nearly flat. They have to abort the mission. It's auto. Coming home. They got the kit out just in time. So where we were hovering, those huge boulders have just come out. Yeah. How can we zoom in? Wow, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, if you hadn't said there was an eruption coming, we would have still been there. When there's a reason why it hasn't been done before. This part of their mission has failed. It takes far too long to position the camera using this system. And it will take months to redesign. The challenges of trying to fly drones in such a hostile environment have suddenly become all too apparent. But even though they couldn't drop the camera on the crater, they did capture a unique view inside it. And that's given them a clue that a big eruption could be about to happen they send up a recce drone to double check. And the crater's really full with all this material that is built up from explosions. Yeah, a working hypothesis is that the volcano um, erupts much more violently uh, when the crater is full. With the crater this full, the big eruption the team is hoping for could be imminent. One with enough energy to blast red-hot molten boulders the size of cars hundreds of meters into the air. I mean, I mean, look how full it is, right? Yeah, yeah, All of this stuff. Really cool. But for that kind of large explosive eruption, another crucial factor has to come into play. The minerals in the very rock itself. Across volcanoes around the world, we have different types of rock that makes volcanoes uh, erupt in more explosive ways. The mix of minerals in the rocks beneath every volcano is unique and dramatically influences how each one erupts. <laughs> 